Give an expression for the probability of breaking even or coming out ahead in bets on red in roulette, which wins with probability 18 out of 38, which in lowest terms is 9 19 per spin. If you make a single bet of $1,000 on red, or if you make 1,000 repeated bets on red of a dollar each. So you go into a casino with a thousand one dollar bills and the question is is it in your self-interest to make a single bet of all one thousand on a single spin of the roulette wheel on red that's a or is it smarter to bet the dollar bills one at a time on red and that's b so i'm going to write very small here because i am trying to fit this all in with a picture at the bottom. For part A it's pretty easy. The probability of winning in that case is simply going to be 9 19 And if you work that out, that is 0.4737 approximately. So there's a 47 percent chance that you are going to win um, your single bet on part A. Now part B is a little bit trickier and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a random variable X to be the number of wins in the 1000 bets and when you do that that random variable X will have the binomial distribution with N the number of Bernoulli trials to be a thousand and the probability of success on each trial to be 9 19 Well, when you define that uh, random variable x as binomial, you know that its probability mass function f of x will be n choose x times p raised to the x power times 1 minus p raised to the n minus x power and that probability mass function is good for x equals 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 1000. We want the probability of breaking even or coming out ahead and that is the same as the probability of getting 500 or more successes in those 1000 Bernoulli trials. In that case you're breaking even or coming out ahead. So in this case we want to sum up the probability mass function from 500 to 1000. And so we want to calculate this. Now, in this particular case, this is a dreadful summation to calculate. To add up, you know, 501 of these mass values with all these factorials and everything else, that's going to take forever. So in this case, we want to use R. And the R statement that we'll use in this case, well, you know that if we put in a P, and of course in this case it's going to be p binome that calculates the probability of being x less than or equal to something we want the probability of x being greater than or equal to 500 so that is 1 minus the probability x is less than or equal to 499 with an n value of a thousand and a p value of 9 19 when you calculate this probability in that fashion, it turns out to be 0 0.05110. I am missing a zero. Let me slip it in right here. 0 0.05110. Which is to say, if you are going to work in your self-interest, 
you would certainly want to take part A over part B because you have a higher probability of breaking even or coming out ahead. So part A is clearly better for the better. Whereas this is what the house wants you to do. This is certainly going to come out better for the house because with greater certainty they know that they're going to come out ahead. Now here is a picture down at the bottom that might help explain a little bit of what's going on. So I'm going to draw an axis here and I will put zero, the breaking even, about right here. In part A you're either going to win a thousand dollars and you will do that with probability 9 over 19 or you're going to lose a thousand dollars and you're going to do that with a slightly higher probability which is 10 nineteenths. So that's part A. What's going on in part B? Let me draw another axis. The extremes here turn out to be exactly the same. You could win a thousand dollars. You could win a thousand dollars if every single bet you make on red turns out. Now that's going to be very unlikely but it could happen. Likewise, you could lose every single bet and that would be a negative 1,000. Let me put zero right here in the middle. Well, it turns out in this case, if I were to draw out all of the things that could happen, again, these are very small, what you would see is you'd see a whole bunch of spikes here and these spikes would peak at some value here and then they would come down and this point 0.05110 turns out to be the sum of all of these spikes on the positive side. So you would have a bell-shaped distribution. I don't think I drew it so well. But in any case, you would have a bell-shaped distribution. And that bell-shaped distribution would only have a small portion of its mass out here to the right of zero. There's another way of looking at this. If you look at part A, your expected winnings are equal to negative 1,000 times your 10 nineteenths plus positive 1,000 times 9 nineteenths and when you work that out that comes out to approximately negative fifty two dollars and sixty three cents which is to say that the balance point of this distribution right here is right here at negative fifty two dollars and sixty three cents. Now on one bet you're either going to make a thousand or you're going to lose a thousand but with the probabilities that we have in here of nine nineteenths and ten nineteenths negative fifty two dollars is what you expect. Likewise over here it turns out your expected value is exactly the same but your probability of coming out ahead is much lower. Keep in mind over here your probability of losing a lot is also quite high, losing everything, but your probability of losing over here is quite low.